Special operation forces have been deployed to combat the escalating southern Kaduna killings. Coordinator Defense Media Operations Major General John Enenche, while giving updates on the military operations during the weekly media interaction with defense correspondents, said the move is to curb the recent attacks and isolated killings in southern Kaduna. He also pointed out that in the south-south, the troops of Operation Delta Safe have intensified the fight against crude oil theft, pipeline vandalism and illegal oil bunkering in the zone with significant successes. Troops of Operation Safe Heaven have continued to intensify efforts aimed at securing the lives and property in the general area. Particularly in this regard, special operations forces have been deployed to the joint operations area covering the various flashpoints. This move is expected to achieve the desired result with a provision of credible and actionable intelligence, specifically from the primary sources. In this regard, the locals are requested to cooperate with the security agencies by availing them with the required information that will be useful to our collective objective of taking out the criminals from the area. The troops have continued to dominate the general area with clearance patrols, aggressive fighting patrols, and confidence building patrols. For the past one month, we have witnessed downward trend in the activities of armed bandits and cartoon rustlers in the general areas of Katsina, Kebi, Zamfara, Sokuto, and adjoining states. Most of these criminal elements have been decimated. Gradually, there is a restoration of human activities in the zone. Honorable Jonathan Nasake, President of Southern Kaduna People's Union, now joins us live. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you very much. The military has decided to change tactics. Uh, do you see any prospects in this? Well, I don't know the tactics they are changing because each time we hear about the changing of tactics, the killings have not stopped. What is most disturbing is uh, that our communities continue to suffer heavy attacks by these militia and uh, each time the militia strike we hear different narratives either bandits have been neutralized we're not talking about bandits in our place in southern kaduna it is a militia full of militia attacks on communities and they have left serious humanitarian crisis in our communities where people have been displaced and uh, the, 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 dis, the displacement without they are not attending to them uh, that it is raining now so so many i just went to the idp camps um, most of the places is not even a camp this white people just decided to stay and uh, nobody is taking care of them so that is the problem we have so it's a different right. thing he's talking about it's not addressing the situation that we, are, we have at hand uh, th there's also been a war of words between the government of Kaduna and many social commentators over the alleged ethnic cleansing. Uh, what would you say is the way out from this age-long crisis? Because it doesn't seem to be ending. It's not an age-long crisis. Many of these commentators are confusing what we used to have that many states have gone through, either communal crisis or ethnic crisis or religious crisis, or any crisis of that matter. But what we have been experiencing lately in Southern Kaduna, and I keep saying this, is unprovoked attacks, invasions of communities that Fulani militia continue to wage against vulnerable communities, farming communities. Most of these communities don't know what is going on. And so they, they, they wage attacks on them by night, and massacre as many as they can and those that survive are displaced into nearby communities and they can only stay there for those communities to be further attacked and displaced and the survivors will go into other communities 
or go into completed buildings without mattresses, without medication. Most of the children in most communities have been staying out of school. In fact, some as long as one year now, they have not gone to school. So what we're talking about is different. It's not an age-long something. We're experiencing invasions of our communities, massacre, destruction, where most of the casualty are women and children. So when we hear these narratives that they are confusing the narratives by bringing in bandits, it's and different. Us, it's not bandits. Help me, help me to, you know, for as long as this has been happening, there's, there's not been any actual reason behind these killings? Well, we can only make our own deductions because since the attackers attacked these communities and displaced them, and then in most instances, they take over the communities. And the authorities will not go after them. None of them has been apprehended. None of them has been prosecuted. Even if they are apprehended, they are only paraded. And news is made that, oh, they have apprehended some that participated in a particular massacre. And after that, this you never hear when they have been prosecuted. And, and that is the story everywhere. We have over 50,000 people that have been displaced and they cannot go back to their communities. Many have attempted to go back to see their homes and they have been killed in that same manner. So that is what we're talking about. So let's not confuse this thing with either the banditry taking place in Sokoto or other places, or either the, uh, what they call for hardest, uh, hardest and uh, farmers clash. It is not. It is unprovoked attacks, massacre across our communities in all our local governments with huge humanitarian crisis. Honorable Jonathan Nasake, thank you so much for sharing with us. Um, looking forward to speaking with you again. Thank you very much.